So I have some questions for you guys today. The last time you saw a doctor, how personal was that experience? For me, it was a mammogram. It's about three weeks ago for the gentleman in the audience. There's a lot of squishing and some cold metal plates. <laughs> Nothing remotely personal about it. It's hard to imagine a less personal experience, honestly. But the images themselves are beautiful. And part of why it's an impersonal experience is the workflow. So your primary doctor orders it an exam, you go to a separate center, a technician who is lovely but knows nothing about you or your history or why you're getting the exam performs the exam. A separate expert looks at those beautiful images, sends a letter to your primary doctor, so now those beautiful images have been reduced to a black and white letter and you get maybe a one word summary from your doctor of your beautiful images. So it's completely impersonal and maybe it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. A flip side of the same question for the doctors in the audience is the last time you took care of a patient, how much time did you spend touching computer versus touching the actual patient? I was in the ICU last week, and the way ICU rounds are depicted here, we stand in these little groups, teams of practitioners who are outside of the room, and a large part of why we're outside of the room is because of the electronic medical record. So if we want to do something as simple as look up a chest x-ray, there's 10 keystrokes to pulling up a chest x-ray on any patient. If we have to enter in data, we have to do that in real time, so it forces us out of the room and away from the patient. Now, the EMR is definitely saving lives. It's making medicine safer, and it is here to stay, but it is almost making medicine impracticable from the physician point of view. It is making us farther and farther away from the patient's bedside, and it brings us in much less human contact with the patient. How about this? When was your last truly immersive learning environment? Maybe it's right now, maybe it's today. For me, it was probably gross anatomy. It's pretty interesting how education now, medical education, is essentially unchanged from what it was 25 years ago in, in many ways, especially when we're talking about sort of basic science 3D things like physics and um, biochemistry. So we have a large lecture hall, we have a PowerPoint presentation, we have big hour-long chunks of time. Even online education, which is a true innovation, has that same format of long periods of passive learning. And perhaps most importantly, is there a better way to treat pain? In a similar way, we've trained a generation of patients that they should be pain-free, and the best way to be pain-free is to take a pill, as opposed to a more active involvement in an alternative concept about what pain is um, and other ways to distract yourself from pain. These are the questions that um, drive us at the Maryland Blended Reality Center. The Maryland Blended Reality Center is a collaboration funded by the Strategic Maryland Partnership between University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore at Shock Trauma um, and between the uh, Department of Computer Science in College Park. Dr. Varshney is the beauty to my brain, so the two of us collaborate. Um, together <laughs> to create innovations in medicine uh, to make life better for our patients. So you're probably asking right now, what is augmented reality? What is virtual reality? If you ask computer scientists, they'll tell you that augmented reality is the positioning of digital data into the real world. So most of you are probably familiar with Pokemon Go. I hold up my camera, I see a little Pokemon right there next to Dr. Gerald. and then I get, a I get a point if I hit the Pokemon. <laughs> but of course the Pokemon's not really there. Or if you've been to any major tourist site, they often will have an iPad at the tourist at the site. I was just in New York City. You hold it up, and it will say Eiffel Tower. Well, I wouldn't say Eiffel Tower in New York City, but <laughs> um, anyway, it will tell you what you're looking at. That's augmented reality. Virtual reality is a completely created virtual world. So everything you're looking at is digitally constructed. That's how computer scientists think of it. I think that's a very difficult way to think of it. It's easier for me if I think about what we're wearing or, or how we're using it. So augmented reality, I think of as a wearable computer with a heads-up display. So take a minute to think about how much of your day you spend sitting at a desk looking at a computer or looking at your phone and operating with your fingers. If you could actually wear your computer and you had only the one screen, all of those screens that now ruin your life or run your life, <laughs> they all go away. No more television screens, no computer monitors. It has the potential to fundamentally change everything about how we interact with computers. Virtual reality in this context, this is the Oculus system, is this truly immersive experience of both sound and vision where you turn around or in, in a completely alternative universe. It's very immersive. If you sit here and ponder these two images while you sort of think about how it could change your daily day life, you probably are already thinking of the, the major problem with it. Whenever somebody's in it, they're pretty isolated, right? And they look a little crazy. So this technology is really maybe in the first or second generation of cell phones. If we remember way back to those big, heavy cell phones and nobody thought about having one in their pocket all the time, 
maybe, maybe sort of some combination of cell phone and Palm Pilot. Like nothing, it hasn't merged yet, and we're still maybe a generation or two of hardware away from this becoming part of our daily practice. But that doesn't mean that it can't fundamentally change medicine. And this is how. We're back to my ICU, and this is a regular patient's room. If you go into any patient's room in any ICU in the country, there are many of them over at the medical center, there are between four to 15 screens in that room. This patient has six screens. And this is a standard room. Not only are there six different data display screens, none of them are talking to each other. So if we think back to Zach, he's our fellow who's in the middle there. He's doing some ultrasound imaging. That's the kind of imaging I love. Um, that's screen number five. If he wants to compare that image to the same patient's chest x-ray, what he has to do is put down his ultrasound probe, turn his back to the patient, go to that EMR, which is screen number six. He has to do all those keystrokes that we talked about. Then he can pull up the chest x-ray, but he can't pull up the chest x-ray and see the ultrasound image at the same time. There's no way for him to do that right now. So physicians, physicians are constantly remembering different imaging that they saw at different places as opposed to being able to put all those images together. So in addition to that problem, think about the cost of all those extra screens. So if you had one display screen that could display any, any information, you could greatly reduce healthcare costs as well. So how do we go from dream to reality? This is, our, uh, this is our first or second set of experiments. So we've developed a way of projecting video images onto the AR HoloLens glasses. So this is Dr. Christian Kane. He's one of our fellows who has intubated a simulated patient. That's not an actual patient. That's a dummy. <laughs> um, and the way that fiber opt optic intubation works is that uh, he has a metal blade. And at the bottom of that metal blade is a little camera. And that little camera is displaying on that screen, that little thumbnail of a screen, that is there to his right is displaying what he can see inside the patient's throat. And so if he were going to intubate the standard way, he would have to look away from his hands, look away from the patient, and look at that tiny postage stamp screen and see the tube pass into the patient's airway. But now he can see all those images right in his eye, eye line, right as he's intubating the patient. So we're in our, or simulated patient in this case. So we're in our first and second phase of beta testing. And once we think we've got it optimized for procedure performance, we'll bring in a bunch of physicians, just like Dr. Kane and myself, and see if they're actually better at doing intubation with augmented reality. This is another example. This is me doing my favorite thing in the world, which is echo. I'm telling you, looking at these images is really beautiful. Um, and you can see in the screen behind me, that's what I'm seeing in my eye line. So instead of having to turn away and look at that image that's behind me, I can look at the patient. I can see Eric. I can see his heart. And I can see all of it together at once. One of the things we've discovered is that people like seeing their own images. So that HoloLens headset will die if you're not wearing it. So when we started doing these demos, we were putting the HoloLens headset on our on our volunteers, and they loved seeing their images. So it's possible that patients would really like to wear the augmented headset so they can see all their images as our providers do. So here's a question that perplexes me and that I spend a lot of time thinking about. Are we talking about the next generation of iPhone? Are we talking about the next major innovation that now all of you in five years have these glasses on? Now we don't have a PowerPoint screen behind me at all. Is that what this is, or is this the next eight-track tape? Is this something that's going to flash and burn? I don't think anybody really knows for sure, but I have a couple of bold predictions now that I've been working on this for some time now. Um, this is what I think. I think that augmented reality will definitely have a role in procedures and really any field that involves doing something. So for example, um, firemen are starting to have augmented reality on their headsets so they can see where the other firemen are, they can see what the oxygen levels are on the other firemen. Um, fighter pilots are starting to have their displays on their screen, so augmented reality will be part of procedures, I think, for sure. I do think that virtual reality will be part of multimodality pain treatment, and we're going to start using it at shock trauma within the next couple months. I hope that virtual reality will be the next big evol evolution in education. I think this sort of 3D immersive education has the potential to really change um, and improve and make more fun, um, some, some hard science. Um, and beyond that, I think the technology needs to to evolve, to enhance human connection, not pull us farther apart. Thank you very much.